All right, everybody, I just got to Charlotte, North Carolina because today is a big day. I'm gonna be picking up a brand new car. And as you know from looking at the description and probably looking at the title, you already know what it is. There's not too many brand new Corvettes that are coming out right now, except for one. And I'm gonna go pick it up. So this is gonna be a really cool experience to get a chance to experience this brand new platform that Chevy has now built and offered to the Corvette folks out there. Uh, I'm looking forward to driving this thing. I'm about to do a long cost country drive with it. Um, but first off, I gotta go pick it up. I gotta go to the dealership, sign paperwork, do all that stuff. Um, me and my brothers came together to make this one happen. Um, so it's kind of be, it's gonna actually be a little shared vehicle between me and my brothers, with me doing most of the driving. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good one. Uh, big thanks to City Chevrolet, Rick over there, Derek as well, all the great folks over there at uh, City Chevrolet in Charlotte, North Carolina, for helping make this happen. Uh, Rick is uh, being very very kind and coming here to the airport to pick me up. So he's gonna pick me up and take me to the dealership. We're gonna start filling out some paperwork and then check out this beautiful, amazing new 2024 C8 E-Ray. Just arrived to the Chevy dealership here at City Chevrolet here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And man, I am so pumped to go inside to go check out my car sitting in there. This is gonna be the first time I'm getting to see it in real life. I've seen a few pictures of it, I haven't even posted it, and now I get to actually see it in real life. So this is gonna be really exciting to check out my 2024 C8 E-Ray sitting right here on the showroom floor looking absolutely beautiful. They sell a lot of great cars here at this dealership. If you're in the Charlotte area, make sure you hit up City Chevrolet. They're one of the best. Thanks. All right. So boom. Oh yeah, it is. I know, and here it is, my cacti green. <laughs> I love the color. I love it. it. Looks good. It is perfect. Vin 34. This is it. I completely forgot what my build was, honestly. So I just I didn't even look at the papers to see exactly what it was, and now I see it again. And I'm so happy I got that build. This thing is so clean. Golly, what a perfect build. What a perfect build. C8 E-Ray, I am so hyped to drive this thing. This thing is going to be really, really cool. Got the big old carbon ceramic brakes, got everything on it. This thing is set. Carbon fiber for the uh, front spoiler. It's, it's, it's actually very interesting looking at the front lip now because on my C8 Z06, we just did the Z07R, which is a new uh, production thing that me and another company came up together. All right, so just got done getting all my paperwork stuff done. So now the C8 E-Ray is finally mine. But I want to check out this beautiful, beautiful black car right here. This is the uh, VIN number one, VIN one, uh, owned by Mr. Rick Hendrick himself. Beautiful black C8 E-Ray. I'm pretty sure he got like the first couple ones for the Z06 as well. Um, but yeah, this, I think, yeah, this is, I'm pretty sure this is VIN one. So, very cool to see this in here, carbon fiber wheels, beautiful, beautiful build. Obviously, you know, NASCAR Connection makes all this stuff happen. Car is looking good, very nicely specced. I thought about doing all black, but um, all black is tough to keep clean. I'm sure he's keeping this thing in a beautiful place like here, and in warehouses and stuff, so he doesn't have to worry about keeping it clean all the time, it's just going to stay clean. I love how it says E-Ray right there, <laughs> super cool. Right now to get in the car prep so that I can learn about it. And then after I learn about it, then I'll be rolling. But I'll definitely give you all a nice little overview of the car, show you what it's about, you know, all the nice little features. Rick does a really good job of teaching me everything about a car. He taught me everything about my C8 Z06, so I had a clue what I was jumping into. All my other cars are for bought. I just had to learn on the fly. But he actually helped me a lot, which was very, very nice. And it just makes the driving experience that much better when you know what the car is capable of as far as all its features. So once it 
they bring the car back, then I'll be, you know, checking out all the nice new features of this car because it is different. It's all wheel drive. It has the high, it's basically, it's a hybrid, right? So there's a lot of different things about this car than any other Corvette I've ever owned. So there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve to figure out how this thing operates, how it works, what the features are, and how to maximize this car. All right, we're going to walk out here and I'll we'll try to check out the E-Ray. Oh, it's sitting over here, looking good. You ready to teach me everything about this E-Ray? <laughs> wow, I love this color, and it looks like different. Like every everywhere you go, like every every angle, every kind of way the light you know hits it, it just it looks different. That's why I love this cacti green. So happy that I went with it, man. What a beautiful color for a car. So happy we spec'd it out this way. This thing is absolutely gorgeous and it's meant to go all wheel drive. The first all wheel drive Corvette from GM ever. And it's right here and it's mine. It's ours. Most options, most features, most everything the same. Same, same trunk space as before. That's your protectors. Okay. For the ceramic rotors. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. This is actually the ductwork off the back for the cooling for this um, performance package. Okay. We don't put it on because by the time you got to Texas, it wouldn't be on the car. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So a lot of driving will just fall off. <laughs> This is my first time having this LT2 motor, so it's, it's different for me. <laughs> we used to see in like the LT6 motor. It's cool though. Looks like smaller almost. <laughs> yeah, and then we did the, obviously did the engine lighting in the back. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 the engine lighting. Yep, 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 that's nice to see that. That's cool. Cool. When it comes standard with mag rods, so you can see the wires on the Yep, the mag ride, all that right there. That's good. That's good. Just itself. That's cool. Have you ever had the roof off on the other one? I have. I have. So, so yeah, I know how to slide there. it in here. Yep, yep, yep. I've done that a few times. It's a nice little feature. That's why I never get, like, you know, the convertibles because you can just pull that off. And for me, it's perfect. But the problem with the convertible, with the, like... I travel a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's the only thing. The yeah, that's so that's, that's true. We, just, we went to a convertible about yeah. three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's I true. I didn't have to go through my braking period all over again. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And this shuts the same way. Yep. Everything shuts the same way. Boom. Difference um, <coughs> between 23, 24 uh -huh. is your front now uh -huh. is an automatic pull down. Oh, oh yeah, they finally made that change. Yeah, I, I, I was always wondering, I'm like, I wonder if they'll ever make that change because it's kind of like, you know, there's a lot of force you got to use to, to close this thing down. Oh, there's a little button there you can click now. Is that, it, did it have that on the Z06, like on 2024 at all or no? Oh. Okay, so so even with the electric front motors, you don't lose any space back here. The only thing you lose is right here. <clears throat> Oh, you lose just a little bit right there. Okay. Yeah, but, so you basically have the same functional space. Yeah, yeah. You still got a pretty good amount of space. You can still stick a, 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 a roll-on travel bag in there easily in a backpack or something like that. So, yeah, I was thinking that you would, like, lose almost all this space, but I thought there was going to be no, electric stuff. Lose, that's what was a misnomer. Everybody thought you lost space. Yeah, there, but, but you don't. Yeah. The drive unit sits back in here. Okay. Underneath where the battery is. Yeah. So the pull-down is you just... Put it there, and then it automatically does its thing. Pulls it down by itself. Wow. Okay. Cool. That's nice. <laughs> it's very, very nice. The other thing you have on this is additional camera. 
Oh. So you have your traditional performance indicator. Yeah. Uh huh. Next to it's the following distance indicator. Oh, okay, so gotcha. So a couple of different features on the 24. Hold it on front. Mm -hmm. Following distance indicator. Okay. Lane departure warning. Oh, okay, gotcha. So more lane assist type stuff. So, so if you if you cross over a mm -hmm. traffic lane, yeah, you don't use the turn signals. It's going to snap you it, back. You're in. actually going to fight the wheel to go. Over. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you how to turn that off. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say like it's like I for me I pay attention on the road. So, so sometimes for me it's more it's sometimes it's more of a hazard having it on mm -hmm. because it's trying to make me do something I don't want to do like because. <laughs> Love the safety feature, but yeah. it's a little bit counterproductive. Yeah, it's only good if you're just not paying attention. <laughs> That's like the Tahoe we drove in today that has super cruise. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. the first thing I do. I take my hands off the wheels and drive. Yeah. Shut it off and put it back. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. Right, on this side, um, The only thing different, and I'm going to go over the difference between your car mm -hmm. and this car, yeah, is everything here stays the same. Okay. Right below the Z mode button. Yep. That's your um, gap. Oh, on the your gap. Follow and distance yeah. indicator. Okay, gotcha. All right, and then up on the, um, do you remember on your Z, mm -hmm. you have the motion sensor that's on. Okay, yeah. So that's yep. now on the screen. Okay, yeah. That button's been, um, that's where the lane departure warning button is now. Okay. So that's a little bit different, but everything else is the same. Yeah. I love the color of the seats and how it all, <laughs> I forgot how I had spec this, and I didn't go back and look. I'm like, I'm just going to get surprised when I get here on how I, I forgot. I was like, I, I remember I did something interesting on the inside, but I couldn't remember. So, but I like it. I like it, though. The one thing on this car, too, is that it's got a new Android off operating system for the radio. Okay. Oh, wait, doesn't have Apple CarPlay. Yeah, you can make it as, no, I don't want to say complex, but like mm -hmm. mine mm -hmm. is actually married to my phone. Yeah. So when I get in the car, I got to put my pin in the screen. Yeah. And then it marries to the phone. You don't have to set that up. Yeah. Um, I'm going to figure out how to unset it up mm -hmm. um, because I don't like having to put, and if you don't do it quick enough. Yeah. And then I can't access Apple Auto. Uh, Apple Car okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm gonna have you jump in. I'm gonna yeah. jump in the other side. Okay, gotcha. I'll hop right in. Okay, oh yeah, one PPF, one PPF. Okay, cool. Your uh, full blown manual. Full manual. And you have, okay. This is the build sheet. Okay, gotcha. And then you still have the quick guides, but now the quick guides are relevant to this car because it talks about the E ray in it, so, okay. um, some of the functions. Okay. Put our foot on the brake and uh -huh. start her up. All right, uh, first start up. Different sound than it the ZSX. So here, but it's a different sound than the Z. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's all the temperature control right, stuff. So I'm going to do this while you're mm -hmm. doing that. Okay. So it comes up as driver. Okay. So that's how you're noticing. That's what will pick up your memory seats and everything. That mm -hmm. you can go in later if you want to set up a profile. Okay. And have it married to your phone. Gotcha. Um, there's pros and cons to it. Okay. And you'll notice this takes a little bit longer for first initialization. Okay. We've laminated your window sticker. Oh yeah, nice. Oh. I I need to do that for my other one because my other one's getting like all ripped up, and I keep on throwing it in random places in my in my trunk, and it's just like getting ripped up. We so. also laminated the paper tag um, mm -hmm. in case you hit inclement weather. It yeah. Yes. It. Yes. Please. Thank you. Have you ever set up your My Chevrolet account? Yes, I have it right now. Um, right, so it's not going to be active yet. You'll get an email from OnStar mm -hmm. in a little bit, mm -hmm. and that way, when you do your OnStar welcome call, they'll know what you're driving, who you are. Okay. People 
people ask me how long it takes to go over the car. <laughs> I usually say 45 minutes. Now it's 55 minutes because you wait for this. <laughs> yeah. Now we are, these are the buttons. Oh, yeah, the buttons you were telling me about. So the one of them is the That's a very interesting start. spot. Yeah, so engine start stop right here. That's that. And then the next one is to instant charge. Correct. Okay. That's interesting. I wonder why they put it right there of all places. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like when you're driving, I would have had it like here or here or something you could just quickly like boom get to right yeah, here. It's just weird that it's down there. Right here because then you gotta go find it. And then you're like you're wondering if you hit the right button. Like did I hit my, you know, auto start and stop or did I hit the hit the instant charge? So do you have a Google account? I do, yes. You can actually set your Google account up on the car okay. as well. Yes. The audio stations um, for the radio. You know what? I don't ever listen to radio. I just hook up to my phone and just listen to my Apple stuff. So there's your traditional map. Mm -hmm. um, if you use Apple CarPlay, you can use your Waze or Apple Maps. Yeah. Uh, quick buttons down here. This that's your dynamics for the car. Ooh. So you have a quick So you, you click the you so you click the E to get to that. Yep, and it'll show you whether you're using both engines, one engine. Okay. So I know um, using this no is the power power. to the car, horsepower. Okay. And that's the torque. Gotcha. So if you want to see that, just hit the E button. Um, this is the gauges. This okay. is your dyno. Dyno. What does a dyno give you? It gives you foot pounds of torque. Um, mm. I've not been riding in this car yet, but mm -hmm. you can look at it for 15, 30, a minute, two minutes. Is it like, is it giving you like kind of dyno, like street dyno kind of like when you're driving it, it's telling you how much you made, like how much power you put into the wheels. Interesting. And then this is more battery related, mm -hmm. um, regenerative, how much you used. Mm -hmm. and, I find fuel this one safe. funny because no one really cares about fuel economy. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you're going to see, if you look, it's, it's about the same. Yeah. 1624. Yeah. Which is about the same. <laughs> but if you have this thing in, and I'm going to see your braking period because you're going to drive a little bit longer period of yeah. time. You know, make sure you vary your speed. Vary your speed. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, yeah, I'm going to go, I'll go 5, 10 up. Go down lower, slower. I'll just keep moving yeah, it around. A nice continual braking for the first 500. Mm -hmm. And I'll reiterate that the track is 1500. 1500. Like yeah, yeah. And then you can go look at your previous trip. Okay. Or you can um, reset the trip. So if you want to go ahead and reset because you're starting off now, you're starting off at zero. Mm -hmm. On there. Quick buttons down the side: phone, map, radio, and then your home button. You still have a home button up here as well. Okay. This is just like hitting that button. Hitting right button. Okay. So you can either go in to the screen to get it, or mm -hmm. just hit that. In. That's probably a lot more easier to use. Okay. Google Assistant. Uh, if you use that, it does have the App Store embedded on here. Mm -hmm. Once you pair your phone, Apple CarPlay will become illuminated, and you can yeah. access that. Yeah. Hot button for your cameras. Okay. Same, pretty much camera locations and stuff. So That's the cameras and everything stay the same. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that the um, gray, mm -hmm. your tires, the yep. outside line of the car. Okay. Big eye, both looking down. Okay. And then you can see the quarter panel, this equinox next to us. Mm -hmm. Rear camera. Okay. Zoom out. Mm -hmm. Big picture, both eyes looking down. Mm -hmm. Traditional. Mm -hmm. And this shuts the red lines off. Okay. So you can go into here and get it, but it's easier just to hit this button right here. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I usually that use button. that. Okay. Yeah, if I need to, like, quickly, like, if I'm parking somewhere, I'll just hit that button so I can just yeah. park. Climate's the same as the other car. Mm -hmm. um, it's a digital version of this. Mm -hmm. You do have Amazon Alexa, so now you can mm -hmm. talk to a Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, and Siri. Gotcha, you, you can talk to all of them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, girls. <laughs> uh, this is where you marry your um, Chevrolet app. Yep, okay. You can have podcasts. Um, mm -hmm. You can have some that you listen to. You can yep. access them there quickly. Yeah. And then news channels. Mm -hmm. PDR is the same. Yep. Okay. Uh, so when you come up, um, 
if you go to the last screen to all the way to the right, mm -hmm. radio station mm -hmm. and map. Okay. If you want to go to a big map, just hit it. Here's your big map. Exactly. So connections or whatever devices you have hooked up to the phone mm -hmm. or to the car. Vehicle, valet mode, four digit pin code, locks mm -hmm. the center console, locks the glove box, okay. diminishes power to the car. Okay. This is where the motion sensor button is now. Okay. So it used to be up here. Okay. This is your lane distance indicator. Okay. Um, if you're go over the lines like we talked about. Yeah. So you, you notice up here it's blank. Mm -hmm. So when I click this, it puts two lines out there. Okay. So if you're between the two lines, they're gonna be green. Okay. On the following distance indicator, it's also gonna put a car in there if there's somebody in front of you. Okay. So you can see the two lines and then the car. Ideally, everything should be green. Okay. So if you start to run up on somebody, mm -hmm. um, it's gonna turn that to an amber color. Okay. If you keep on running up onto it, it's gonna start the front emergency braking. Oh, okay. So this car will shut off. I will tell you that I'm gonna show you how to shut all that off because if you take this car to a track, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you don't want that on. It's going to wear you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll start breaking when you don't want it to break. Okay. Teen driver, you probably won't let a teen driver Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is all the same. Drive mode customization is where you can go in and you can tell Z mode and my mode how you want it to react. Okay. Another thing different in this car is, you know when you make changes here, it tells you what you're doing and it gives you that little symbol down there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to sport mode. Okay. Now it plays a video. Interesting. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. That's like really cool. You can make changes out there. Um, let me go back to tour. So hit the that's Z so mode cool. button. All right, so hit the Z mode. Boom. Hit Z mode. Oh, Z. Oh, so if you want to change things, you can actually do it from this screen. Yeah. Previous car, you had to go into the drive mode customization yeah. setup, but you can actually adjust it through here. Another thing different, Jesse, is <clears throat> so hit the Z mode button again. So Z mode used to be a toggle between Z mode and Tor mode. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted a nice soft drive, mm -hmm. unhook Z mode, go back to a soft, softer drive. Yep. If you wanted to have a spirited drive, hit Z mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to track. Track mode. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool that they did that. <laughs> they should do an update on like the Z, the 23 Z06 so it can do that. Yeah, this whole system is different. Mm. Um, hit the Z mode button. Mm -hmm. So now we we're in Z mode. Hit the Z mode button again. Z mode button again. And it puts you back into the mode that you, you were in left. Yeah, that's cool. Cause then yeah, you don't have to keep on doing all this yeah. messing around. Yeah. Honestly, I, I have my car set up my mode. I use my mode like 24-7 yep. all the time. I have it. So I, and I use that mm -hmm. to toggle between spirited. There's not a lot of difference between um, my Z mode and my my mode, except a little bit softer steering wheel, a little bit softer brake. That I'm the same way too. Mine is like softer steering wheel, brake pedal. I forget where I had it. I, I think it's mainly the steering wheel, just so I don't have the mm -hmm. hard steering wheel all the time. Well, we were going to Bowling Green, and I had my she drove out there, and mm -hmm. my wife hit the Z mode button, mm -hmm. and she went to change lanes and jerked the car over. Oh, <laughs> the steering wheel was that's so light. Like, yeah. She's <laughs> like, "What did you do?" <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure everything's turned on. All of this is the same. Yeah. The other thing, this is a not, it's not a um, complaint. So if we go into climate air quality control, mm -hmm. we go and make a change. We want to hit back. This thing snaps you back up to the top. Mm -hmm. The other car stayed where it was. Yeah. So that's normal. Yeah. You know, if that happens. Mm -hmm. This is where you can turn everything off. Oh, okay, Automatic cool, cool. emergency braking, mm -hmm. uh, front pedestrian braking. Mm -hmm. Sideline really doesn't do anything other than illuminate the mirrors. Mm -hmm. Parking assist is the sensors on the back and rear cross traffic is the sonar. Yeah. So if you are going to track the car, I would suggest turning it on. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. And keep it true the whole time. If you, if you turn these things off, does it automatically turn back on when you turn the car back on? or you got to turn it back on. Okay, so cool, cool, cool. If you cool, make cool. the conscious effort to turn these off, mm -hmm. a couple things will come on back automatically. Mm -hmm. 
Um, like if you take traction control off. Yeah, yeah, that's always kind of. You take yeah. the slip differential off. Once yeah. You start the car back up. Yeah. It turns all that back on by default. Okay. So that concludes my overview of my C8 E Ray. And next up is getting this thing loaded up and then heading on the road for a nice drive and kind of going through my experience with my first drive with this thing. Also, just learn this mode thing for doing the shuttle and normal mode. So you just step on the brake and you go over here, you flip this over. And next thing you know, it brings you here where you can select shuttle or normal. Normal is when you fire up the V8, you fire up the electrical motors. Shuttle is where you fire up, fire up the electrical motor only, and you can only use the electric motor for low-speed maneuvers, like in like a parking lot or something like that, or in your neighborhood. Um, and then the stealth mode is where you can fire up the electric motor only, and then drive on the roads for you know up to like 45 miles per hour for up to a few miles. Um, but uh, I think it requires a, set, a specific temperature to get to for the electric motors before you can use stealth mode so right now it only lets you use normal and shuttle mode so I'm actually gonna use a shuttle mode to move over to go grab my bags out of the Tahoe so I you know normal mode I'm gonna shift it over to shuttle I'm gonna start there so I'm gonna fire this thing up all right it's on <laughs> this is very interesting so I'll move my seat up real quick. All right, so it's not for public roads. Okay, so I put it in drive and I'm gonna drive. Oh my gosh, this is so weird. <laughs> Driving without any sound. What the heck? Wow. <laughs> in a Corvette driving with no sound. It's like driving in neutral. <laughs> so weird. So weird. Wow. This is interesting. This is very, very interesting. <laughs> it's so quiet. It's like driving an electric car. Except it's not an electric car, it's a hybrid. <laughs> Let me pull up in front of City Chevrolet here. Cool. for this beautiful and wonderful car. I'm liking this thing a lot, actually. Um, one, it's a beautiful car. Two, um, I, I really like this whole all-wheel drive thing going on. It's very different than what I'm used to with Corvettes. Obviously, there's never been a Corvette out there ever that's been um, all-wheel drive, so that's interesting. Just kind of getting used to it. Um, really, I haven't gotten a chance to really truly feel the all-wheel drive and feel the pull and feel the electric motors and all that fun stuff because the car limits you right now in the first few miles I'm at like 80 miles with the car right now and um, it won't even let me go past like 4,500 rpm and that limiter is on there to restrict so people don't go crazy and break things right in your first early miles of the car you gotta get the break-in period done before it allows you to open up all the rpms that break-in period is 500 miles and then, you know, obviously, before you really, really, really want to push super hard, you probably want to wait to the 1,500-mile point to do that. Um, and luckily for me, I'm driving all the way to Texas, so I'm going to put at least 1,200-plus miles on this car by the time I get to Texas. So by the time I get to Texas, I'll be close to getting ready to push the car. So, um, but along the way, I'm going to hit the 500-mile point, and it's going to open up the RPMs, allow me to get on it a little bit, and uh, show you all what that's like. But until then, I got about 420 miles, 420, <laughs> before I get to 500 miles. But so far, it's very the ride. The ride is very comfy. Um, feels more touring like. Once again, I haven't pushed a car. I haven't like gone through corners fast or anything like that. But uh, it feels a little heavier, right? Um, heavier than the Z06. Then that's what I'm making. My, when I'm making any kind of comparison, I'm making comparisons 
to the Z06 because I don't have a C8 Stingray. Um, I only have the E-Ray and the Z06. So any comparisons I'm making, I'm just making it to the Z06 because that's the only thing I can really compare to. I've driven a, a Stingray. I've tracked one. Um, so I can make comparisons to that, I would say, on a track and all that. But I've never, like, owned one. So I don't really, I can't make ownership comparisons because I've never owned a Stingray. But, yeah, and this is the first, the first drive with this beautiful E-Ray here. Um, man, there's so much I can unpack about this car. And I'll do that in other videos. This video is just about just going on the open road, driving for a long time, and just taking a road trip. This car um, ended up, uh, didn't go crazy optioned out on it, right? So this isn't like, you know, some $200,000 car or anything like that. Um, but I, I didn't go super basic either, right? I still got some decent stuff on it. Interior, I'm absolutely loving it. Don't mind the messiness right now. I got a lot of stuff with me. <laughs> but, um, very clean. I love the color combo on the inside. Obviously, I love the cacti green on the outside. Um, I learned a lot of things from Rick at the dealership on all different features of the car, which you saw earlier in this video. And, um, you know, I got, I'm sure I got more to learn as I start working with, as, as I start doing track stuff with it, right? Getting on track and using the instant re recharge button, which is like down here, which is kind of a weird place to put a button, but all good. <laughs> But uh, a lot of things I gotta learn with this car on how it works. But um, so far, yeah, it's interesting. It's just, it's different, right? It's very different. All right, grabbing my first bit of fuel. I'm not like low on fuel at all. I make maybe use a quarter tank max or so. But I'm just grabbing my first little thing of fuel. Let's see, five gallons to put in right now. I'm gonna keep track of it to see how, what the fuel mileage is on this CA E-Ray. Even though most people don't care about fuel mileage, I do. Because even in racing, in motorsports, fuel mileage actually makes a difference. You literally can win or lose races because of fuel mileage. So I'm very curious on what this thing burns on this long road trip heading to Texas with this absolute beauty of a all-wheel drive hybrid E-Ray. All right, let's check this thing out. So my first little bit, we'll just keep adding them up as we go, keep you all informed. Uh, 5.7 gallons, $21. 3.7993. Oh, man, I love these cheap prices and better fuel over here in the east compared to like freaking California with its sorry fuel. And we're off again. <laughs> yeah, um, it's gonna be very interesting to kind of figure out exactly what this fuel model is, is like on this thing. One thing that's kind of interesting that I'm, I'm trying to get used to is the sound of this car, right? Um, obviously, I haven't hit it yet. I haven't been ripping on it, but you know when you fire it up and you hear that cross-plane crank V8, you know that 6.2 liter back there is different. You know, uh, not that I've missed it. You know, I, I have a C6 Z06 with a beautiful LS7. You know, I had a C7 Z06, and I know what that sound like. It's it's a nice sound. It's just you know it's uh, I've gotten so used to when I'm in the C8 platform having a uh, cross plane or sorry a flat plane crank V8 you know like we have in the Z06 so it's just different it's different getting a little bit used to it but <laughs> that's all good it's cool it, it's interesting it's different I'm all for it it's all good I love V8s period when it's cross plane flat plane whatever I am madly in love with the flat plane crank V8 now that I got my C8 Z06 but I can still dig with this. Oh, all these little freaking pebbles and rocks on this road. I'm gonna be drive slow through it right here on this on ramp so that I don't scratch up the car. <laughs> I got the car PPF, thank God, for this reason right here. You never know what type of crap you gotta drive through, especially on long drives. Really, anywhere you go, you just never know where you're gonna go and where the roads is not gonna be that great. part throttle acceleration right there and hearing a little bit of that e-ray electric motor system up front <laughs> just a little bit not too much just a little bit i can dig it so i just noticed something very interesting about the car as i was driving and it's not doing it right now because it just switched and why it switched i have no clue but it has cylinder deactivation on it um, so it goes from V8 to V4 and the reason I knew is because it said it like right there on there It said like cylinder deactivation. So um, Sorry for the quick acceleration <laughs> but, 
But um, anyways, it had still is. I saw it go from V8 to V4, so that's kind of interesting. Not my most favorite thing in the world um, to go back and forth between that, but I guess if you're cruising on the highway, trying to get better gas mileage, it's like a way to go, right? It's it's not bad. Um, you know, it helps you save fuel, I guess. I don't know how much it's helping me save. We'll find out. Um, maybe on one of my stretches, I'm just gonna do a straight up, you know, fuel run. Being like, okay, let's see how long this thing can go without touching the fuel. The only issue is, I mean, you know, going 300 plus miles, 350 miles or whatever, at some point you gotta pee or poop or something, right? <laughs> so it's hard to just drive that straight. So you gotta stop somewhere. And then sometimes you're like trying to make up time. And you're like, man, if I stop here, I might as well get fuel. You know, so I don't have to stop again and get fuel or whatever, but I don't know, we'll see. Well, yeah, now it's in V4 mode again. Well, now it's not. I'm trying to play with it to see, to see what's up. But um, yeah, it goes back and forth. I guess it just depends on if I'm part throttle, what's going on, I don't know. I'll, I, as I as I drive this car, I'll learn it and see when it does it, when it doesn't, all that. But um, yeah, it's uh, it has cylinder deactivation, which the C7 Z06 had it. I think the C7s had it maybe as well. I can't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, a few cars have had it. So we'll see. We'll see how that affects the C8 E-Ray. The C8 Z06 does not have it, which is great. <laughs> but we'll see how it is for this. Maybe it helps me out with fuel mileage. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. But yeah, 347 miles on the car now. Um, started off with 30, around like 30 miles on the car. That's how quickly I can rack up some miles on the car. But this car will not be like the Z06 where I go put like damn near 30,000 miles in one year. It's not gonna be like that. But for this first bit, I gotta rack up the miles quick to kind of get the motor broken in, make get everything broken in so the car feels good, it can perform well and be at its optimal uh, mileage, at least break-in mileage so that we can go do fun stuff with it. Uh, but yeah, so far so good. I just got into Alabama, um, just rolling along right now. Uh, traffic finally kind of cleared up after going through Atlanta. Um, thank God I didn't go through rush hour in Atlanta, but it was then getting close to it. So it was, traffic was building up. But anyways, got through that. Car's rolling well. Just kind of just trying to learn the car, learn the sounds and, and things because it's different. It's not the Z06. The Z06, I'm so accustomed to all the sounds that that car makes. So this one's a little bit different. The vibrations are different. The V8 obviously um, fires differently. Like the firing order for the V8 is way different than um, than the, the one for the Z06. So just a lot of little differences. Even just like the, the acceleration too as well. You know, when I'm getting onto the on-ramp or whatever, um, you know, you hear that electric motor working up front. You hear the V8 in the back. Um, this, the 6.2 definitely, at least the exhaust, is definitely quieter, that's for sure, than, um, than the Z06. Z06 is, man, I think even stock is loud. Um, this is not. Um, now, I haven't gone wide open throttle, so I don't know what wide open throttle sounds like this, but part throttle in the Z06 is loud. Part throttle in this is quiet. It's a very quiet car, which is kind of interesting to me. Maybe it's supposed to be just more daily friendly like that. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'm just learning, learning the car. There's nothing bad I can say about the car. This all-wheel drive, you can feel it for sure. The front wheel's working um, when you're going through a corner and stuff, and you're part throttled through a corner. You can feel the, the front wheel's wanting to pull you through the corner, which I like because I, I get that same feeling in my all-wheel drive cars that I do own. Um, as some of you who follow me, you know I got uh, a couple of Skyline GTRs. I got an R32 GTR and an R34 GTR. I've tracked the 34, I've drag raced the 32, so I kind of, I've, I've gotten to know all-wheel drive a, a little bit, and it's interesting to get that kind of feeling through this, but this is different though, because it's electric motors with more instant pull, instant power, instant torque, instant everything. So I haven't gotten to push this car yet, but I'm feeling the beginning of some fun <laughs> with this car. So can't wait to get it broken in. Can't wait to get to a proper track. Can't wait to do some canyon driving with it. Can't wait to do it all. Um, it's all coming with this car over time. I can't do it all in one day. I can't do it all in the first week, but I'm gonna do a good amount of stuff very quickly and then um, spread it out a little bit. There's a lot of Z06 stuff I gotta do with the mods I got on it now. So yeah, it's, it's ongoing. I'm only one person, so I can only do so much. But uh, 
we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna create some cool content, do a lot of cool comparison stuff, and just show everybody out there what these beasts are, are, are capable of. I'm not gonna sit here and say one car is better than the other. Maybe at certain things, one car is better than the other at, but I'm not ever gonna sit here and say, oh no, this car is just way better now, because they all have their positives. They all have their not so positives, right? Um, you just figure out what works best for you for what you need the vehicle for. And that's what I'm here to do. All I'm here to do is provide information and love these cars and enjoy them. I don't want to hate on anything. Like these are amazing machines and I'm not smarter than the engineers who built them. And you are not smarter than the engineers that built them either. So remember that you, you watching, you are not smarter than the people who built this car. <laughs> no matter what you think, um, just enjoy them. If you have one of these, E-Ray, Stingray, Z06, C7, C6, C5, whatever it is, enjoy the car, enjoy it, have fun with it. Yeah, there's modifications that you can do that can help the car perform even better. Obviously from the factory, they make these cars great from the factory, but there's things you can do to increase the performance. And people always say, oh, well, why didn't they do that from the factory? You know why? Because there's all these different legal things they gotta deal with. There's EPA, there's this and that, there's all this crap they gotta deal with. So no, they're not gonna put a supercharger on it from the factory. Yeah, they could if they wanted more power, but there's a whole slew of crap they gotta deal with to do that, and they're not gonna do that. No need. If you wanna do it, you can. <laughs> see what fuel is like just made another pit stop for some fuel you know I threw about 40 bucks at it we'll see what it is I couldn't guess but this thing didn't want to take my car the way I'm supposed to take it but I'm about to see what it's like fuel mileage for the C8 ERA <laughs> the fuel mileage game is fun Alrighty, so I put 45 in it and it did it all for I didn't think it was gonna take that because I was like at a half tank or so so maybe that fills it up I don't know but um, yeah, there you go. There's another <laughs> 10 gallons in this thing. There's another a bit of fuel, 45 bucks or so. Can't count the dollars because every place is different. But yeah, I'm, uh, I gotta look at how many miles I actually have so far and how much I've spent. Y'all been calculating it. So I gotta check. All right. Thanks. All right, about to fire this thing up. Let's see how many miles I got on this thing now. Let's see, I'm at 392. <laughs> so you've seen how much fuel I've thrown in it. Obviously it came with the full tank, but I'm at 392 now. Time to get back on the road. All right, gotta get a proper lunch by going to Whataburger. <laughs> Look at the C80 right parked out here. This thing has been doing great. It's been doing great. Car's been feeling good, doing good, all that fun stuff. Um, you know, just slowly breaking this thing in. I'm gonna be at 500 miles probably tomorrow. But I'm gonna get this lunch in right quick. When I say lunch, like lunch slash dinner, because I'm gonna get to the hotel here in a moment, get some rest, and wake up super early morning, and then get rolling. But I gotta get some food because I'm hungry. <laughs> this is the last thing I eat until tomorrow, and tomorrow once I wake up, I'm gonna be gone. Just chow down on this wonderful Whataburger here, and absolutely crushed it. I'm good. I was gonna like record and show you all what I was eating, and I was so hungry, I just plowed through it. So. No video on my food. Maybe the next Whataburger trip, which could happen in the next 48 hours. The food was great here at Whataburger. You all know I lo absolutely love Whataburger. So I'm filled up and it's time to continue this journey. I actually just go into the hotel like 20 minutes away so I can get some rest for tonight. All right, it is morning time and it is time to get rolling in the C8 E-Ray. Let's start this thing up, fire it up. <laughs> Cold start. <laughs> uh, sorry I had to keep you outside, baby. But that's what you gotta do when you're at a hotel. <laughs> Anyways, she's out here, she survived. A little dirty from driving in the last 400 something miles. I got another 500 plus to go. Uh, actually shoot, more than that maybe. Shoot, maybe, ah, probably have at least another 700, 800 miles to go. It's gonna be a lot of driving today, a lot. <laughs> so it's time to get on the road. Let's do this. 
Also, for you guys wondering how this luggage space is, it's, it is the same as I showed you before, early part of the film and stuff, but I got my bag back here. It's just a roller bag that you can roll onto a plane carry-on. Um, you could fit this here, and if I scooted it over some more, I could probably fit a second one here or a really big backpack. But I mean, it's pretty decent space. The front also has some good space, too. I have a big um, bag kind of similar to this one up there, about actually probably a little bit bigger size, just a little bit more malleable up front. It all works. So I'm on the road now, and uh, yeah, so this morning was my first time really doing a true cold start. And um, like true, true, like car is very cold, cold start. Um, I think the temperature outside uh, is 46 degrees. <laughs> so, you know, definitely not warm. And the car actually warms up pretty quick um, compared to the CA-Z06. I, I feel like the CA-Z06 takes a little while to get warmed up. So I guess that's kind of nice where you can fire it up and, you know, it gets to its optimal temperatures um, a lot quicker than the CA-Z06. I think the CA-Z06, the cooling is so good, which is good. I mean, don't change it, please, GM. Keep it like that. <laughs> uh, but it just takes a little bit to uh, get warmed up. And then um, it's really nice, especially like on a cold day, you know, it's, it, it, if you're getting these cars, you know, try to get the options where you can, um, you know, have obviously have all the heated seats and all that stuff. Once again, I'm not like a big guru when it comes to all the option stuff. So I don't know if like that's an automatic thing or if you guys select it. I forget. I don't know because I don't care. You know, what I care about is how a vehicle performs. Um, as far as like a sports car, uh, I don't care about all the features and crap. <laughs> um, but for heated seats, it is nice. Um, and it's nice for this car, you know, I fired it up and immediately the car sensed that it was cold outside. So immediately it was like, okay, let me make sure I turn on the, uh, the heated steering wheel and the heated seats. The car automatically did that for me so that as it was sitting there warming up, I hopped in and I was cold. I'm like, oh my God, it's kind of cold. I sit in the seat and I'm like, oh, this is nice and cozy and warm. And the steering wheel is nice and warm for your hands. So that is just something nice to have if you are able to select that kind of stuff and put that in your car, whatever car you're getting. If you're getting this car, another car, do it because it's worth it. Especially if you're someone who lives in a place where it does get chilly. And, you know, there's people in California who think, oh, yeah, it never gets cold here. Yeah, it does. I live like, I live in a place in California where it gets like like 115 degrees. And guess what? In the winter, it can get down to 30 degrees. <laughs> so everywhere in the world can get hot. Everywhere in the world can get cold. So get the, get the options if you can. You know, it is definitely worth it. Just a nice little thing to have, especially being in 2024. We deserve it, right? And I'm cruising along right now, and I'm just thinking of just the differences between this car and the CA-Z06. Just right now in this moment, I can tell you that if I had to make a comparison, the CA-Z06 is a race car. The CA E-Ray is a straight up cruiser, but not like a cruiser as in like, not like a, like, not like a fast or sporty car. A cruiser, just as in this car is definitely smoother on the highway. Now, uh, maybe it's just the settings I use on my CA Z06, but this car is smooth. I mean, it's smooth and it's freaking, but it's smooth, it books, it is not as loud as far as exhaust. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so used to the CA Z06, which is just so loud. And I know I have the AWE switch path uh, catback kit on my CA Z06, but even stock, the stock CA Z06 is not much quieter than the aftermarket exhaust. It's, it's almost just as loud. So, like, just it's different like even cruising on the highway like you know not the CA-Z06 doesn't have like a drone or whatever you want to call it but it is just louder like you can hear it the whole time like but this you can hear the exhaust in the back you can hear you can hear that dull rumble but it's just not as loud and this car is a cruiser but it's very smooth uh, very very smooth <laughs> on, on this highway uh, even going over bumps and stuff I know it's smooth this car is heavier for sure you can feel it a little bit but um, yeah, this car is this car is like more of the GT kind of cruiser versus the CA Z06. It's just this more raw race car that's still very refined. And the Z06 has always been like that. I mean, you shoot, you go back to the C6 Z06. That thing was straight up just a motor with a steering wheel and and other stuff around it to make it look like a street car. <laughs>
All right, so I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I just went over the 500 mile point. The reason why this is important is because right before the 500 mile point, from zero miles to 500 or 499, um, the, uh, the, uh, um, the tack would only let me go up to about 4,500 RPM. Now that I've gone over 500 miles, I'm at 506 now, um, now it's opened it up to where I can do, use a full RPM range, which looks to be 6,500 RPM. Um, obviously, you know, the C8 Z06 allows you to use 8,600 RPM. Um, this is uh, 6,500 RPM. So that's good. Um, now I get to open the car up a little bit more, get to get on it a little bit more, um, which is great because after I'm done with this trip getting to Texas, the first thing I'm going to go do, hopefully, is get this thing on a dyno and see what kind of power this car makes. Um, everybody's car makes different power. Some people's car was built on a Monday. Some people's car was built on a Friday. <laughs> so um, I'm going to see exactly kind of what this one makes on 93 octane. Um, so I, I'm very curious to know what that is. We'll find out. But it won't be on this video. It'll probably be on the next. But this video is all about just driving. Driving and exploring and uh, going from North Carolina to Texas. Nice little road. guys so I'm just rolling along here and I, I thought about it I'm like hey now that I'm past 500 miles I can actually start doing launch control right now obviously being here on the highway there's no launch control happening for me here you know I'm still driving and I got a long ways to go but I'm like hey let me just you know mess around with this and see what the launch control settings are on here on the C8 Z06 you can vary your launch control you can go anywhere between like 3500 rpm all the way up to 5000 rpm and I think it let I think it, it, it goes up and down every two 250 rpm or something like that and then you can vary the slip percentage which is like the clutch slip i think or something like that um anywhere between five percent and fifteen percent fifteen percent is if you're on a really bad surface and it's not very grippy and you need the car to kind of slowly roll out then you'll want to be closer to fifteen percent if you're on a grippy surface and you want the thing to launch as hard as humanly possible you want to be closer to five percent um and then the highest RPM you can. Now, uh, anyways, this car obviously has different RPM ranges, RPM band than the uh, C8Z06. So I wanted to see, okay, if I go to the launch control settings on this, what's going to happen? So I decided to jump on here to mess around with it. In order to engage your launch control, you gotta go through a few little steps first, right? So your first step is going over here to these set of buttons right here, where you see the um, electronic stability control off button right there. You're going to want to press that twice. So I'll press that twice. One, two. Actually, sorry, I didn't do it right. Let me try it again. One, two, boom. All right, so when you press it twice, what happens is you're gonna have these two lights right there light off. Those two lights that light off, one is a traction control, has a slash through it, and the other one is ESC off or whatever. Both of those off now, right? So if you don't see those two lights right there, then you didn't do it correctly. The first time I clicked it, I accidentally clicked it wrong, and only one light was showing instead of two. So I didn't do it right, so I had to redo it again. So once two of those lights are showing, then you should be ready to go. Also, you need to make sure you're in sport mode or track mode, or I think Z mode as well, you can do it in as well. Um, sport mode has given me the best launches, but I'm in track mode right now because I just felt like putting it in track mode. So anyway, track mode, both of those off. Now you just scroll over to your performance settings on the car, right? So you use this, and I'm already in the performance thing right now. When I say performance, you can go left and right, like, you know, audio, maintenance, whatever, boom, boom, boom. Now I'm in performance, so I'm in performance. Um, and in performance, you can go like zero to 60. You can do all stuff, you can scroll up and down. But anyway, we're, we're talking about launch control right now. So I'm in launch control, or sorry, in launch control. Once you're in launch control, you're gonna click, boom. Once you click, it's gonna take you to this screen where you can customize it, right? You can either do automatic settings or you can scroll down and you can do custom. 
once you click on custom, then you can vary your RPM, right? So RPM, let's see how low I can go. As low as 3,000 RPM and as high as 4,000 RPM. That's what you can do. That's how much you can vary it. Now let's go to slip percentage. You can go as high as, let's see, 15% slip and you can go as low as, uh, 5% slip. So 3,000 to 4,000 RPM worth of RPM launch control and then 5 to 15% worth of slip percentage. And that is how you alter your uh, your launch control so that you can have it. Now, each time you go launch, you're going to need to come back in here and alter this thing so that it is where you want it to be. I don't believe it saves the settings. At least on the CAZ06, it doesn't. So it's not like I can set it once and it's automatically like that all the time. I always have to come in here and reset it so what I want every single time I turn the car on and off. Now, if you haven't turned it on and off, then it should stay the same, but if you've been turning it on and off, you gotta go back and reset it. One thing I just noticed that's actually very interesting about this car um, with the uh, e, e all-wheel drive, the E-A-W-D, I gotta get used to saying that. Um, so when you're driving, like let's say with the C8 Z06 or really with any car period, when you're in uh, eighth gear, because these things are eight speed, you're in, you're in eighth gear, you're cruising on the highway, 70, 75 miles per hour, whatever you're cruising at. You're cruising and you want to accelerate. Usually you got to downshift, right? Like if you, if you really need to accelerate to like get past someone or do whatever, you got to downshift because it's so sluggish in eighth gear cruising at, you know, 2,000 or 2,000 RPM or whatever you're at, less than that sometimes actually, you know, 1,800 RPM, <laughs> 1,500 RPM. If you try to just accelerate like that, it's very, very sluggish. But in this car with the electric motors, these electric motors up front are like, they like run independently than the motor in the back. So a normal all wheel drive car, you know, you have everything connected, everything's running together and it's all based off the engine. Well, this is all wheel drive, but the fronts are not spinning based off the engine. It's spinning based off the electric motors up front. So stay with me now. When you accelerate from lower speed, like let's say a uh, lower RPM with eighth gear, you don't downshift at all. The motor is being sluggish, kind of like, uh, trying to get going, right? But the electric motors are like, I'm not connected to your engine back there. I can give you the full sauce immediately. So you find yourself being able to accelerate a lot more quickly in eighth gear than you can in a uh, normal uh, non-hybrid car, right? So you feel the motor, the electric motors up front using a good amount of power to start accelerating you and pulling you forward while the motor is being super sluggish in the back because you wanted to stay in eighth gear and you didn't want to downshift. So you end up being able to accelerate so much better in eighth gear than you could before. It's actually really, really nice because now I don't have to sit there and be like, oh, I got to accelerate now on the highway. Time to downshift, you know, two or three gears so I can accelerate and then go back to eighth gear. No, 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 no downshift. Just stay in eighth and hit the gas. Electric motors kick in and give you a decent amount of power and start pulling you forward pretty good. And it, it's kind of cool. It's very interesting, very different feeling than what I'm used to. I'm making a quick pit stop at a gas station real quick before I go grab a quick little bite from Chick-fil-A because I love Chick-fil-A. Trying to fill up right now. I've gotten down to about a quarter tank of gas or something like that, so we'll see what this is. Just keeping track of all this stuff for all you fuel mileage uh, hungry people. <laughs> but uh, we'll see what it is. Keep on just racking them up. I haven't even been keeping count, so hopefully y'all keeping count in this video of where fuel has been. You can rewind and figure it out. But, um, and you can do the math on the distance between um, Charlotte, North Carolina and Dallas, Texas, and y'all can all do the math on kind of what this fuel is, because I'll just keep recording every single time. I get to a gas station. Man, this car looks so good. Any kind of lighting, any kind of shadows, any kind of anything, this car looks absolutely incredible. I really love this cacti, cacti, cacti green. Um, I'm not in love with the wheels. Uh, I, I don't like the two-tone kind of thing, but don't worry, I'm gonna be changing these out. If it was one solid color, I could probably get with it, but I just don't like the two-tone thing. But there was gonna be a delay on my build if I would've went with the other wheels I was trying to get. So. I had to do what I had to do. Car looks so good though. Such a beautiful build. Interior, I don't think, uh, you have all seen the interior earlier in the video. All right, come on, fuel. Oh, there it is. All right, so we did uh, 
52 bucks, 14 points. Let's see the final. 14.7. Boom. There you go. Keep track of it all. Stop to grab some more fuel. All right, let's see where we're at now. Let's see where we're at. Uh, it only did two gallons. Why did it only do that? Golly. I hate when that happens. All right, I gotta figure this out now. Uh, this is gonna be nice and slow. <laughs> oh well. We'll just wait for this thing. We'll grab some snacks for the road. This is a long drive. I'm out here booking it. <laughs> but I need a little bit of snacks to keep it going. Car's a little dirty, but all good. That's what happens when you drive cross country. Snacks here. Boom. Why did stop again? Golly. All right. I gotta get this thing figured out. Let's see that. 18. This should, I'm a little bit less than half a tank, so this should fill up quite a bit more. I figure each time I stop, when I gotta go use the restroom, I just gotta, I'm drinking water, so it's hard to just keep barreling for hours and hours. You gotta stop and take a leak every once in a while. <laughs> All right, stopped at 10 gallon, 10.2 gallons, 40 bucks. Add a little bit more there. <coughs> Boom, yep, so there we go. That's the fuel for that stint right there. I was counting, remember, I started with 35 miles on the car with a full tank. So once we get to my uh, first real stop in Texas, we'll figure out the math <laughs> on this fuel mileage. At 783 miles now, Proceed let's go. All righty, next fuel stop right here. I've been driving a while. I've been on calls back to back to back, all that stuff, but uh, <laughs> 62 bucks, 15 gallons. Boom, there you got it, there you got it. This is fuel mileage game right here, boys. Trip to Texas is complete. I just arrived right now and I am so pumped uh, because I didn't even go straight home. What I'm doing is I'm going to Jotec. <laughs> Jotec Motorsports. Sorry about that. I'm going to Jotec Motorsports. Right. Jotec Motorsports. And I'm going to be getting my E Ray on the dyno. It's going to be fun, but that's not going to be in this video. That's going to be in the next video. Thank you so much for tuning in on this trip, man. Overall impressions of the C8 E Ray is the car is, is so far really good. Road trip very very comfortable nice cruiser plenty of power plenty of everything um it's great i mean it probably felt more comfortable than the ca z06 driving from north carolina to texas so a great vehicle so far man yeah i mean obviously you saw all my impressions throughout the whole time you saw fuel mileage you saw all that fun stuff and the car did good it did really good very impressive um but now it's time to get into some of the more uh fun stuff right dyno let's see what kind of power this thing makes let's see if the numbers are real if they're legit what kind of car is this we're about to find out right now on the dyno but it's not gonna be on this video it's gonna be on the next but um yeah, this video has been playing long enough. You don't need to hear me yap anymore. If you want to hear people yap, go watch the other reviews on these cars. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'm out. Watch the next one next week.